Now I have had this problem before. I've had it on my three and a half Britannia in the house. The builder had pinned the return crank through the pin. It, he'd done it across through the pin. But the, the valve gear is all quite weak, really. There shouldn't be any real load, especially on a piston valve engine. There shouldn't be much load through the valve gear. So it shouldn't need much holding. Um, so I personally don't pin any of my any of my return cranks. I rely solely on the grip of the pinch around the around the pin. The reason being, if something goes wrong, I don't want to bend valve gear rods. Don't want to break something in the piston. I'd rather that just slipped and I can just reset it quite easily. And I tend to scribe a line across so that I know where to put it back to in the first place. Now I know some people will set things up mathematically and work out exactly where it wants to be and then pin it. I'm not saying don't do that, but my personal preference would be if you do that, don't leave the pin in there. Use the pin as a reference point, set it, get it all set up, take the pin out when you clamp up when you've clamped up the return crank. That way, if anything does ever slip, you can still use the taper pin to reset the position of the crank. Uh, because like in this instance, the pin hasn't been secured fully in the wheel. So the pin can turn as, it, as we've just seen. So you introduce something that you're pinning it so that something else is going to break. If something's gone wrong that's caused it to slip, that force is just going to transmit to the next weakest point, which in this point is inside the wheel because the crank pin hasn't been pinned in the wheel. Um, so yeah, that's that's my way of thinking. I know some people will still pin it and, and I've got nothing against that. It's just for me personally, I'd rather be able to see that it slipped. So like I say, if you be, for, for me personally, put a pin through, Work out exactly where it needs to be, pin it, clamp it, take the pin out, and then if it does move, I'd still scribe a line across so you know exactly, you can easily see where it needs to be. And then when it goes, if it goes, or if you've taken it apart to do some maintenance, you put it back together, you put the taper pin in, you set it, take the taper pin out, and you've still got the accuracy, but you've and the repeatability of where you're setting it, but you're leaving the weak point as that pinch, which is easy to reset if anything does go wrong. So let's take a look at how I'm going to take this apart. So first things first, let's get this little grub screw out of the way. Won't be needing that anymore. Because I'm not going to be able to, or, yeah, I'm unlikely to get this back in uh, in exactly the right spot. There we go. That's loosening up. That now turns on the pin, but it's possible this is all quite tight and quite good, so that may or may not have enough movement to actually come off the side. Um, I might need to put something in there to spread it, we'll see. Uh, but first thing, I'll have a fiddle, should be enough movement to come towards us. There we go. Now we need to figure out a way of pulling that pin out. So what I'm probably going to do is get my uh, collet chuck from the lathe or the mill, tighten it up on that pin and, and pull it out. So there we go, I've managed to get the uh, tailstock or the, the mill 
hold her out in there and take it out. So my plan, having got it out, I will undercut it slightly in the middle. So where the wheel is, leaves a hole like that. The crank pin sits in there like that. But what I'm going to do, and this is a, it's a pretty good fit, that pin. So I'm just going to undercut it a little bit here. Not by a lot, only a few thou. Then there's somewhere for the Loctite to sit. So if I then smear that with Loctite and reinsert, the Loctite will sit in there. But where the pin's a good fit, the Loctite's probably pushed out of this area and out of this area. So you end up with the good fit that's keeping it all in line and true at the ends and a Loctite down the centre which is keeping it gripped in place. So that's the plan. Uh, I'll go and find what Loctite I've got and I'll be back in a moment. So yes, uh, I had been speaking to a friend the other day, getting his advice because I don't tend to use Loctite. Um, he suggested 603 for a good lock. I had a look around, I haven't got 603. He then messaged again saying, or you could use 638, which is the similar sort of thing, but with a different curing time. I do need to check the curing time, but I do have some 638 sitting on the shelf. Uh, but yes, I will check out what the curing time is, but I can get it set up in um, and I might try and put that grub screw back so that it looks right, put the grub screw in, get it set, then take the grub screw out so that it's not, as I was saying earlier, so it's not making it a too strong a fix. So, let's get to it. Sorry, one last thing. An idea I'd had, a reason for using the milling arbor for holding the uh, chuck. Not only is it smaller than the lathe one, uh, which has got a bit of a boss on the back, it's longer, but it's smaller width-wise. But because it's from the mill, an R8 chuck, it's got the hole threaded up the back. So if that pin hadn't come out by hand, I could have put the drawbar from the mill in and, and a weight on there to use as a slide hammer to pull it out. So that was the reason for using this. As it happens, it pulled out quite easily. So, let's go to fixing it. So, welcome to tomorrow, where I've been doing some looking around on the internet. I've found the 638 data sheet, which gives um, a gap filling tolerance of between 0.15 and 0.25 of a millimetre, which roughly equates to between 5 and 10 thou. So, what I'll probably do is put a 5, gro five thou groove in, uh, and then that can be filled up with Loctite. And um, maybe I'll do two small grooves rather than one long groove. Um, and hopefully that'll be enough. I don't want to take too much metal away. Um, and then smear it, clean up the, the hole, clean up the pin, smear it with uh, the Loctite and put it back together. We'll see how that goes. So to do some machining. So the next stage, having put those five thou grooves on, give the pin a nice clean up, using a new rag for this, I'll give it a spray of degreaser, and a spray up the hole as well, wipe with the rag. Get all that nasty crap off. So, I need to remember where I've put the Loctite. Spread some on the pin, and then we'll see how quickly we can get it all assembled. So, 
So I'm going to try and get this all done in one hit while the Loctite is still wet. Um, I know I said I didn't like grub screws, but I'm going to try to get this all set up with the grub screw in the right place, just so it doesn't look wrong. I've put a little mark on the pin so that I can use the chuck as a, a means of holding it as it goes back together. Um, that, that mark is where the hole of the grub screw is. I know roughly where that wants to be. It wants to be sort of 45 degrees up to the right. So that's where I'm going to aim for. So this hole, this gap wants to be about there. I'm then going to put it back together, reset, put the grub screw in, get it all connected, and then try and roughly set the return crank while it's still wet, while I can still move it. And then we'll let it dry. I'll take the grub screw out and hopefully we're then good. So I'm gonna try not to put too much on because I don't want it going everywhere else. So I'm actually just going to put a little bit on each of my grooves, which should be groovy. Um, ordinarily with a thing like this, I think the instructions did say to try and put some in the hole as well. That's the instructions from the data sheet of the uh, Loctite. Give me, make sure I didn't get any, any on the bearing. And then we can try and assemble it. Obviously using a soft hammer for any of that. That's pushed in nicely. Turn the crank on. Turn it so we can get the grub screw in. So, setting the valve gear, release the brake. Forward centers and move. Move the reverse of forward aft. Bow shouldn't move, but it is at the moment. So I'm in the editing phase and there was a lot of video and it took a long time, me just tweaking the, the return crank. It, the, um, the Loctite did go off quicker than I'd sort of hoped or it needed it to. Um, maybe the 603 would have been better for that. Um, I can't remember which one had the shorter cure time. But I did get it set because the pin at the 
locked out of cure and I had to take the grub screw out before I could finally set it and it's about half a hole out the, the grub screw uh, so it doesn't quite line up but it's probably closer than I had hoped, uh, had, not closer than I hoped but probably closer than I could have anticipated. So that was the thing, um, it's all done, I didn't have a chance to test it on air before Graham came and picked the engine up um, but he did take it to the club the following day and I'm going to leave you with a video of it going around the track because it seemed to run pretty well. Um, so please do like, subscribe, share um, and just let me know what you think um, and I will be back before long and we will start working on the next project. So thanks very much, take care and goodbye. <laughs>